Welcome to Tea with PILPG. I'm Paul Williams, the president and founder of the Public International Law and Policy Group, PILPG for short. Today in our series of talks on professional excellence, we will be discussing the WOW principle, how you can excel and wow others with initiatives and projects that show an entrepreneurial spirit. We will be enjoying a cup of refreshing jasmine green tea. This podcast is inspired by Tom Peters' book, Reimagine Business Excellence in a Disruptive Age. I'm here with three young professionals. Let's start with a round of introductions from our Boston team. Lisa. I'm Lisa. I'm a summer associate at PILPG, and I'm a rising 3L at Harvard Law School. Sophie. My name is Sophie. I'm an undergraduate student at Tufts University, and I'm interning with PILPG for the summer. And Roy. I'm Roy. I'm also a rising 3L at Harvard, and I'm a summer associate here. I just finished uh, half my summer at the Department of Justice. Great. Well, welcome to Tea with PILPG. Today, we are going to discuss your thoughts and experience around innovation in and beyond the workplace, how to create wow projects that are innovative and impressive, and how to nurture a personal wow brand. A quick definitional moment. Projects that wow can mean going above and beyond for a given assignment, but can also mean reframing the way your organization does business because you bring an innovative and unique outlook to everyday work around the office. Paul, it seems to me that to really innovate in the workplace, you have to transcend convention. If that is the case, how can I pitch wow to my boss and reimagine the potential of my work when I assume that she is bound by convention and expects me to be so as well? Well, Lisa, first you have to excel at being conventional. Always produce excellent work product and become known for your strengths. So basically, master convention in order to transcend it. Next, make sure that you think through your projects along three very important dimensions. Always, always, always start with whether I'm going to wow with this project, or how do I make this project a wow project. Then, make sure that it's consistent with the mission-driven impact of your organization. Essentially, be conventional color within the lines with respect to the mission-driven impact. And third, think about how your project is going to inspire others to rave about your work product. And we'll come back to this later, but that's one of the best ways of transcending convention, is doing something that the conventional individuals will rave about. So, Paul, I know I'm just an undergraduate, but is this realistic for me? Well, Sophie, to be honest, you are never so powerful as when you are powerless. When you are young, people have low expectations of you. So you have immense opportunity to wow them with your accomplishments. Look, Sophie, nobody gives you power, authority, or respect. You have to earn it. You earn it by quickly volunteering for the crummy jobs. Everyone will expect you to do the crummy jobs because you're the undergrad intern. But what they don't expect is for you to excel, for you to wow at doing the stapling, the photocopying, strategic communications work. So what you do is you identify space within those projects, even though they are crummy or bottom of the totem pole type of projects, and you find out how they can be improved. And you have incredible value to the organization because you're fresh. Let's face it, anybody who's been with an organization for over a year has mastered convention. But they probably haven't mastered wow. You come in, you're learning convention, but you still have the space, you still have the perspective to identify wow. So you know the mission of the organization, you know the convention, and then you innovate consistent with that convention. But, Paul, the big question I have is, in order to wow, you have to take a risk. And in taking a risk, you're likely to fail at times. So what happens when I fail? And how do I stop that from affecting my credibility going forward? Roy, you will fail. Okay, not just you personally, but <laughs> as a young dynamic professional seeking to wow, you will fail. You will fail more often than you actually wow. And it's important that we're clear about failure. 
it's not that you fail because you're lazy, incompetent, unqualified. You fail because you're shooting for the stars and you don't quite make it to the stars, but you catch the moon on the way back. Taking risks do not always pan out the way that you think they will pan out. That's why they're called risks. You'll never accomplish wow in a project or in a personal brand unless you take a risk. Yeah, Paul, that, that sounds great and all, but if I do fail, how can I pick back up? You pick back up from failure by building up an incredible amount of idiosyncrasy credit. You build up goodwill within your organization by adhering to convention, by your previous wows, and then you draw upon that goodwill in order to come back from a failure. If you're pursuing wow, people will realize that, right, Lisa really accomplishes wow projects, has a wow brand. You know, she frequently fails, but that's the price of success. We have these amazing innovations around the organization. We have these amazing projects that we've accomplished because Lisa has taken the risks and has stretched. Of course, that means she's failed. You surround yourself by your raving fans. Remember earlier we talked about one of the important things was to impress individuals so that they rave about you. If you've built up your idiosyncrasy credit and if you have senior professionals raving about your qualities and your ability to accomplish wow projects, that gives you the space. Also surround yourself, if possible, by senior executives who embrace failure as part of learning and also by peers. Peers who will not root for you to fail, <laughs> but will support you if, you if you do fail. And even if you don't succeed at that, embrace internally your own willingness to fail and to reward yourself for taking those risks, to reframe your failures as learning opportunities and ways in which you can improve or iterate your own ideas once you've learned from those. Let's be honest, major entrepreneurs will tell you that they failed many, many, many times before they hit it big. Talk to any venture capitalist in New York and they'll say, we're betting on 10 projects. We know nine will fail, but it's the one that succeeds that we're counting on in order to generate that return. Now, I'm not saying here at PLPG failed nine out of 10 times, but those are the numbers that you're dealing with. It's important at this point to note that there are two types of wow. There are wow projects, innovating on the way that photocopying and stapling are done by the interns, innovating a strategic communications platform for an organization, or innovating how grant development is accomplished. And then there's the personal wow. There's the wow that's part of your brand. So I'd like each of you to take a minute or two and walk me through what you think is your personal wow brand, how you're planning on developing it, and how you plan on making it unique to you. Lisa? I think my wow is that I'm an explorer. Okay. <laughs> wow. That's impressive. I'm always ready to say yes to a new experience or challenge. I approach new situations and issues from a place of genuine curiosity. And although I'm a strategic planner and I find that very important, I'm also adaptable and flexible in the moment. Explorers are prepared to veer off the path when they see the opportunity for innovation, but they are grounded in a polished skill set that makes them comfortable, confident, and most importantly, competent when they are taking that risk. I plan to continue developing my explorer nature by expanding my skill set and using that skill set as a foundation to innovate when I see the opportunity. Every time that I deviate from the traditional path or the set agenda, I become more unique in my exploratory experience and my wow. Wow. I'm looking forward to exploring a number of ways of enhancing PLPG's product development and client service with you in the coming year. Sophie. My personal wow factor is that I am an honest risk taker. And what I mean by that is that my competency and professionalism are five years ahead of what's expected of my peer base. How are you going to develop this and make this unique in the coming months and years? As an undergraduate intern, I can take the expectations that others have of me and make sure that I build upon them and expand the expectations that they have knowing that I'm a dependable, hard-working employee who will make sure to get things done. Great. We're going to put you to work. <laughs> Roy. 
the way I get someone to say wow is that I've become a member of the red team. So it's really valuable to think from the perspective of the home team, from the blue team's perspective, and that's incredibly important. The first step in tackling a problem is mastering an understanding of the, pub, of the problem from your own perspective. But you can definitely impress someone by doing that. You're going to have to step out of, that, of mastering your own perspective and move on to taking another perspective on the situation, to looking at it from the uh, position of the red team, of the away team, um, and to challenging some basic preconceptions that might be involved in the way you've been thinking about this the entire time. I just got done doing half my summer at the Department of Justice, and I remember having a meeting with my supervisor where we were talking about an assignment that I had, and all of a sudden he turns to me and the whole conversation changes when he asks, well, should we even be doing this at all? And in that moment, I felt as though everything up until then was me displaying my mastery of our perspective. And in, he understood that I was competent in that and he trusted me with that. And he wanted us to zoom out for a second and ask, should we even be heading in this direction or should we be changing directions? Should we be challenging what we're doing from the first place? And so, did you rise to the occasion? I did. I, 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 it was, it's a difficult position to be in because it's, he's been working on this assignment. So for me to say we need to change directions is almost a little bit of a critique of his position. Um, so I had to walk a fine line, but I essentially said, you know, I think that we definitely could be taking this road, but there are other roads that we could be taking. And I advocated for changing the position a little bit. And I think that he was incredibly receptive to that. And I think it changed his perspective on me. So he created space. So one of your supervisors created space for you not only to wow, but also to fail if you gave advice that he or she was not going to take. So I'm a little bit confused. Is this an individual wow or a corporate wow? Well, I'm glad you asked that, Sophie, because it's, it's actually both. You all have identified wow as part of your personal, personal brand. You'll use this wow you'll use this personal brand, you'll use this perspective to wow in the corporate environment and to wow on the various projects that you're engaged with. So they're essentially one in the same. Sorry. You're thinking, wow, <laughs> Paul, you're, um, you're sort of promoting individuality and, and individual success, but at the same time, you're talking about m convention, mission-driven corporate enterprises and nonprofit enterprises. How does one do that? And it's actually quite, quite straightforward in that as long as you're staying in line with your organization's strategic vision and goals, and you're matching your passion, imagination, and persistence and unique value with their strategic vision and goals, you can wow on an individual basis on the various projects. So your individual wow, your enthusiasm, your energy, your drive contributes to the overall ability of the corporate enterprise or nonprofit or otherwise to accomplish their objectives. And that's how you meld the two of them together. So how do I know if I've wowed? Well, has anyone ever said, wow, <laughs> to you, Roy, when you've completed a project? Not quite like that, but <laughs> they, have, okay. they have been wowed. <laughs> okay. Well, seriously, you know if you've wowed somebody, if you, if you bring them a, a work product um, or an idea or an innovation within a, a, an enterprise, and they say, wow, or they say, wow, I'm astonished. Uh, if you're making a difference, then you know that you've wowed. If someone says, well, yeah, you can pay the rent with that, you haven't wowed. <laughs> if someone says, well, yeah, you've, you've met my expectations, yeah, you haven't wowed. Um, if you've transformed the way in which something is done, then you've wowed. Think of yourself as a startup enterprise, a startup of you. Do people want to invest in you, their time, their money, their energy? If they do, then you've wowed them. Are they pulling you into various projects? Are, are they recruiting you? Are they, are they giving you business, so to speak? Well, then they've wowed, you've wowed them. Are they talking about you? Um, I mean, are they saying good things about you uh, <laughs> on social media or, or around the office? And if they are, if they're your fans, if people are raving about you, 
then you've wowed them. So is it your customers, your colleagues, your peers? Um, that's who you want to see if you're having an impact with. So once I've started to wow, how do I stay on track and keep wowing? You make it your lifetime personal commitment. Wow is not a one-off. Think of yourself as a startup of you. I don't mean to shock you guys, but you've got 50 years in the professional community ahead of you. You have 50 years to lay and implement a legacy. Your legacy can be, I paid the rent, or your legacy can be, I tried to change the world. You want to see and seize every project as a wow opportunity. You want to see every professional interaction as a way to polish and to refine the wow part of your personal brand. Just as a startup needs to be constantly innovating, attracting funders, producing new products, and being at the cutting edge, you're not just number one for a week. You guys want to be number one for 50 years. Developing that mindset, committing yourself to that mindset, and quite frankly, relishing and enjoying the opportunity that wowing gives you to make a difference, change the world, do the cool and exciting stuff. Sophie, you may start the summer stapling and photocopying, but because you've done such a wow job at that as an intern, you will quickly accumulate other opportunities to engage with client development, grant drafting, strategic communication. So not only are you going to be presenting a presence of five years beyond your peers, you'll actually get projects that are five years beyond your peers. And that will be the benefits of wow. And that, Lisa, is how you keep on track wowing. You wow, you reap the benefits of wow, and then you wow some more. And you find that you basically could get to spend 50 years doing the cool and exciting things in whichever profession that you choose. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. If you would like to know more, please follow us on Facebook and Twitter or on our website, pilpg.org. If you have a tea or a discussion suggestion, let us know on Twitter with hashtag tea with PILPG. Until next time, this is Tea with PILPG, brewing excellence around the world.